You're really going for it. Yeah. I'm cold. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Mackenzie and today I'm coming to you live from my childhood bedroom to show you how I made this Harley Quinn dress from The Suicide Squad. I already have one tutorial on my channel already which shows how I made this dress back in August but since then I was actually able to see the movie so when I made that tutorial it was like four days before the movie came out and I just decided to throw something together. Since then I've made the dress four different times um, for a couple of my friends and now I finally decided to make one for myself and Everyone's been asking about commissions and for another tutorial, so I decided that I would go ahead and make an updated tutorial using much more screen accurate fabrics. And so this is what we have here, um, and I'm super excited with how it came out. I'm going to be talking about a lot of different things in this video. I think it will be helpful to do like a comprehensive breakdown and study of all the different screenshots and reference pictures I've taken from the movie and behind the scenes stuff I was able to find. So I think I'm going to do a little slideshow. So with that said, let's go into the little analysis of the dress first before we get into pattern making and then the actual making of the dress itself. Hello, welcome to the analysis portion of this video. We're going to start by looking at the fabrics that they used for Harley's dress. So first we'll look at the sequin fabric and you can see that they used kind of a fabric that has varying sizes of sequins, but um, I found a good dupe of that on Etsy, but it ended up being like $30 a yard or something crazy. So this is the one that I decided to go with. On top of the sequin fabric, she has this um, bright red mesh accordion tulle fabric, which um, you can see I actually found a really good dupe for here. When you look close up, you can also tell that each of the fabrics are ruffled underneath. It's not just um, layers stacked on top of each other. So I ruffled these two as a test and this is what they look like together. I'm not sure what fabric is actually holding all of the layers of ruffles together. They might be on mesh itself, but I decided to go with this red underlayer. It's just a red thin lining fabric that I got at Joanne Fabrics. And the last fabric you'll need is another lining fabric. It's just a sort of translucent white fabric that can be used for the underlayer of the dress. With the fabrics figured out, we can now move on to analyzing the structure of the dress. So we'll start with the top here first. In this photo here, we get a good look at the top of the dress, which is a sweetheart neckline as well as with the straps and one side of the sleeves looks like before it's destroyed and turned into her battle dress. Next, I have a couple photos of the back of the dress that show it kind of has a sloping V that it comes to in the back and it's lower than it is in the front. As far as the closure for the dress, I think she has a clasp system in here, like kind of how a bra works. And I think hers might actually have boning in the corset, which I didn't do for mine, but that's because I've never made a corset before. So this was just what was easiest for me. And then here we get a good look of what the sleeves look like after they have been a little bit destroyed. One side is tied off and one side is still sort of intact. Okay, so now let's go into how I actually made it. How I made this. So the first thing I do is I make a pattern and I use this mannequin here. You can't really tell, but she's adjustable. First, I would take muslin fabric. So that cheap fabric you can get at any fabric store. It's just white and like a cottony material. Um, I use that and I basically drape it on here and plan out how I want to do the top of the dress. So that's the only part that I pattern. The skirt is done using math, which is fun. So we'll talk about that math <laughs> in a little bit. But for the top, I make a sweetheart neckline and I only do one side. So I only do one side of the mannequin and then when I'm gonna cut it, I fold it in half. And so the entire top is actually one piece. Cease so going around here, all the way to the side. In my studies of her dress, I think it was all one piece. It's probably tailored a lot better than I've done it. I think mine's way too low in the back, but every time I make it, it comes out different. So what can we do? I'm not a professional seamstress. 
after you cut out that one piece, then I drape it on the mannequin and I'll fit it to the mannequin. Then the next step is to drape with the two different fabrics. So here's a look at how I drape the fabric piece I've cut out onto the mannequin to get that shape that I just showed in the video before. I try to do this fitting with as few seams as possible, so I just pin it to the mannequin and I try to do one on each side. And here's what it looks like after it's pinned, and the next step is to sew this down and then start draping the other two fabrics over top. I'll do the sequin fabric first, pin it, sew it down, and then I take the um, pleated mesh fabric, I pin it and I sew it down, and then on this side I do the same thing, and I do the sequin fabric and I'll pin it and sew it down here so it has that overlap, and same thing with the mesh fabric. Because her dress has an overlap, you want to make sure that you are doing your draping starting from the correct side. So this video is as if you're looking at the dress on her, so this is the correct way. This should be on the left side if you were wearing it. So luckily the sequin fabric that I chose has a little bit of a stretch into it, so I'm just draping it and then pulling it taut, cutting around the edges and then pinning them down and sewing over to make sure everything stays in place. I'm doing almost the same thing for the accordion fabric, but I have to be a little bit more careful and make sure that the edge is super clean and tucked under, which is what I'm pinning now. And then additionally, I wanna make sure that the pleats show and don't just get stretched out to a flat fabric. So I'm going through and placing pins as I group and bunch the sections of accordion and then cutting, pinning it under and sewing it down on top so nothing moves. I repeat this same process for the other side with the overlap and this is what it looks like with sequins, then with the pleated fabric, and this is what it looks like with the bottom cleaned up. And then to attach the strap, I have, uh, actually have what I was using. I use this ribbon. It's seven eighths of an inch and it's just this. It doesn't really matter what it looks like because it's not shown. I make a little casing for it because hers has, I think hers is probably elastic, but I use ribbon because I don't want it to, I wanted it to be like a reliable, sturdy length. I make a casing that's a little bit too long, like maybe four inches too long. So it bunches like you have here. It's kind of gathered in the back, but it bunches up here. So here I am just cutting the edge of the casing I've made. I just made it a little bit wider than the ribbon itself. So double that and then sew down the edges and I'm gonna flip it inside out so I don't have that um, exposed seam there. And then shove the ribbon through it and make sure to sew down the edges so that there's um, a little bit of that extra fabric that moves like she has. Um, since I am making the battle outfit and not the ball gown before it gets messed up. This one is the side that's supposed to be ripped and tied into a bow. And then this one is still pinned up here. The like somewhat still intact. It still has a bow, but it has this ruffle underneath it. It looks better when it's on. It looks kind of dumb hanging here. Okay, now on to phase two of the construction of the dress. We're going to be looking at the skirt and how I made it. So let's take a look at some reference pictures from the movie after she has ripped off the side of her once perfect ball gown skirt and turned it into this battle ready high low dress. Even in its original ball gown construction, the dress did not have perfectly symmetrical layer placement for the ruffles. So that's kind of nice when you're putting it together. It doesn't have to be perfect and you can go back in with scissors and adjust them to be more accurate with what those layers look like. So I took a couple of reference pictures here to figure out how many layers I need to do on the long side and how many I needed to do on the shorter side. And I found that after tracing over the images, I needed 10 layers on the longer side and five on the shorter. For the skirt portion of the dress, I actually filmed myself doing all the calculations for this on my iPad. So I'm gonna show you that now with the voiceover explaining all the mathy math things. So after analyzing the dress, I decided that it would probably be best to go with a three-quarter circle skirt instead of a full circle skirt. 
just based on the way that the movement was. And so in order to do that and cut that out of the fabric in the right sizes, I had to do some math and I'll show you guys how I did that now. To start off the calculations, you'll need three measurements. From your waist to your ankle, from your waist to your mid thigh, and your waist measurement itself. For the sake of seam allowance and to have some wiggle room, I'm adding two inches to each of the waist to ankle and waist to mid thigh measurements just to make sure I don't have to recut. To help visualize, I'm drawing two circles, one that represents my waist and one that represents the longest length of the skirt itself. I'm removing one quarter of the circle to help visualize better what I'm going to be doing and adding in my waist to ankle length, which is the longest length or a portion of the radius of the larger circle. The next step is to calculate the radius of the waist. For mine, which was 27 inches, I had a radius of 5.25. Next will be calculating the circumference, which the equation for that is two pi r. So we'll be solving for C um, by plugging in two, 3.14 as the value of pi and my radius of 5.25 to get a circumference of 32.97. Um, and then because we're only doing a three quarter circle skirt, I'm going to multiply that by 0.75 to get a value of 24.75. And then I'm multiplying that by a quarter to make sure that I'm making up for that bit of lost section there with that one half removed. So I have an accurate representation of what my radius cut should be. The final step is to calculate what the actual length of the cut is going to be. So I'm adding that 6.25 to my waist ankle length, which is 38 inches. And that will be the total length of the fabric that I'll be using. And I'm cutting out this shape three times and sewing them together. And here's what the final shape looks like flat on the ground and then on my mannequin. Okay, and then next, once I have the skirt piece cut out, I cut it to be the high-low um, that I want where it's shorter on this side here and then long on the other. It's hard to, once I have that shape correct, I take it off and I lay it on the floor and I measure out three inch sections. And then I draw basically like big circles around the entire skirt so I know where to put the um, different ruffles. So once I have that, then I take the these two fabrics and I have to turn them into the ruffles before they can be sewn to the dress. So I have a ruffler foot on my sewing machine and I can link that below. Um, and it's just, it takes me like, I think to ruffle all the fabric I need, which is like 16 yards of this and 16 yards of this, it takes me about five hours if I'm nonstop doing it. Um, and and then once that's done, I used to pin it and keep it like when I was making Marty and Laura's dresses, I would pin it down to keep it. But now that I started doing the circle method, I think that works better. And you can just pin the one end where you want it and then just sew along that line. So it's a little bit more messy, but since it was for me, I didn't really care. So each ruffle layer is first and I start from the bottom, definitely start from the bottom because then you won't be fighting with the ruffles as you sew. Um, so I start with a sequin layer, sew it down, same thing, following that same line, I put the mesh layer over and then three inches or so above following that line that I drew, I sew the next layer and then so on and so on. Although I started doing the follow the line fast and loose sewing method with the ruffles, I thought I would include these shots of me pinning the ruffles in place in case you wanted to do this yourself. And these are a lot longer ruffle layers when I initially sew it on. So I have to go through and I cut them all down and try to make it more screen accurate. So like she has this kind of mini ruffle in the front that from the side turns into a longer one that goes down um, much lower. So that's just what I've noticed from the ruffles. Oh, also.
also the underlayer. So we also have an underlayer here, which is super ripped up. It's just another like cheap, uh, transparent white lining fabric that I cut into the same circle, the same method that I use for the um, base of the skirt. And I sew that to the inside under here. And then once the dress is assembled, I go through and I cut upwards and I rip so that it doesn't look like neat little cuts. It's more um, ripped like as if she were to rip off the piece of her skirt. So I think that's it. This is the second time I'm making this video. So hopefully I didn't leave anything out, but let me know if I did in the comments. You guys are free to ask me any questions or DM me on Instagram. Um, I'm always happy to help. But other than that, thank you so much for watching and don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel for more cosplay content. I'm always making more Harleys. I have a couple more coming this year. I'm actually going to be making a tutorial for doing her leather outfit, which I haven't seen anyone do yet. So I'm very excited and I'm actually going to be using real leather that I thrifted. So yay sustainability. But that's it. So 